Behind the mask, Father Lautmilch, I want to take an in-depth look at the man hiding behind the mask, pretending to be a priest offering safety and sanctuary. Now before I get started, I highly suggest you play the game beforehand or watch a playthrough to grasp and understand of what content I'll be speaking about in regards to this character. Caution, spoilers ahead. As we all know, Father Lautmilch was a teacher teaching in the Catholic school during the year 1995 which can be found on a calendar throughout the various childhood flashbacks. The events seem to have taken place around or near December. Now, Lautimich, based upon theory and hidden messages in the game, was the priest that Jessica had come forward to with abuse going on at home. If you haven't seen my Behind the Mask, Jessica Gray yet, I suggest you do so as I go in depth about the email she was sending and how it ties Lautimich in. Though, so continuing on. Obviously, Lautmulch took advantage of the abuse going on at Jessica's home. He saw an opportunity to blackmail her in various ways, which one of these ways was informing a teacher that Jessica was a high liability if allowed on a field trip and that he had recommended that she remain behind with him doing library work. It's clear what his intentions were from the start, and you can clearly figure this one out for yourselves based upon how Lautmulch acts towards Jessica when it's finally revealed what happened to her towards the end of the game. Which brings me to go back just a little bit to where Jessica is leading Blake down the hallway. She's asking Blake if she can stay over and if his parents are home. Blake obviously questions this, but Jessica is quick to shrug the subject off. Though it's clear she has no intention of remaining behind by herself, let alone to face what she will face at home. If this wasn't raising any red flags, then I don't know what was. However, it's very short after this that Lautmich overhears Jessica, and he quickly comes out asking her, What don't you know, Jessica? It then goes on with Lautmich saying, Let's step back into class, please. You can note that he is quick to put his hand on Jessica and gesture for her to go in towards the classroom. However, Jessica grabs Blake's hand and hopes to not be left alone with Lautmilch. So we can assume that when Jessica had started her library study with Lautmilch, that he began to become a little bit too close towards her, perhaps even sexually abusing her. Lautmilch, having noted that Blake was going with Jessica, quickly interjects by saying this. You don't want to get in trouble, do you? Lautmilch is clearly trying to intimidate Blake by telling him if he goes with Jessica, he will get into trouble. He also appears to be trying to tower over Blake as well, and his nature seems a little bit more assertive more so now. However, it's clear things don't go along to Lautimunch's plan, as Jessica drags Blake in, telling him to stay with her despite whatever consequences may happen. And of course, Lautimunch continues to try and blackmail and intimidate both children. Lautimunch's nature towards Blake is very clear. He appears to have no interest in Blake and only with Jessica. Now, when Lautmilch asks if he has to call their parents before turning to Jessica, asking her if he has to call her father, it's evident she is fearful, showing Lautmilch has taken full advantage of her father's abuse towards her. This response pleases Lautmilch as he smiles and seems to show affection towards her, having changed his attitude by saying, I only want to be friends. I only want us to be friends. Nobody's in trouble yet. Does one of you think you can make this right? However, he then asks who can make this right, and it would seem that Lautmich believes that Jessica can. Clearly, another way to manipulate the children into believing that this will make things right, though it's probably more so for Blake's sake, as the young boy does not seem to register or pick up what's going on. Then, of course, Lautmich gets Blake to back up out of the classroom, where it's later revealed as you head towards the exit of the school that you hear screaming and see Jessica running away, followed by Lautmich. Upon discovering Jessica's death, Lautimuch tells Blake that whatever he saw wasn't what it seemed. This is about all the real footage you'd get to see of Lautimuch, and we can clearly tell that his attire is that of a priest. He also seems to have receding hairline, but a very interesting feature. A large red mark upon the top of his head. At first I thought this might have been like a health condition, so I did some digging around, and well it's nothing like that. Though, as it turns out, this is just a very large birthmark, and if you pay a lot of attention to the monster you can in Outlast 2, it also has the exact same birthmark. However, I'll get into a little bit more with the monster in a couple of seconds. It's unclear as to what exactly happened to Lautimuch after the events of Jessica. 
We don't know if he moved away, but one theory suggests that something happened to him and Lautemont was either shot or committed suicide. How can I back this up? Well, with the monster, of course. You see, the monster you encounter is Lautemont, or a very distorted version of him based upon young Blake's fragile and frightened mind. But how does this back anything up? Well, that's a really good question. Let's start with the jaw, shall we? You see, the monster is missing its bottom jaw, and if you can make it out, there appears to be some odd holes on the top of the monster's head. Now, this could mean a variety of things, but only one thing seems to suit. A gun. Possibly a shotgun. This gun would have more than likely been placed below Lautemilch's jaw and shot off, causing Lautemilch's jaw to completely explode and shatter. The scattering bullet pellets probably also pierced up and through to his skull, causing those very holes. Now, why Blake sees this is a very good question as well. It's possible that Blake either witnessed this or he saw Lautemilch's body at some point. But truth be told, we may never know if Lautemilch did this to himself or if someone had done it to him. However, while we are focusing on the monster, there are some things that I want to talk about. The monster has a long tongue which it uses to ensnare Blake with. We can assume that this is representing that Lautemilch has a silver tongue, meaning he was very good with his words and knew what to say to get what he wanted. As for the hands, they are representing the fact that Lautemilch had probably touched Jessica and others in various places that should not be touched. This reflecting upon his perverted side, but also if you pay attention, you can see that one tiny deformed hand is actually moving on his groin area. Yeah, I know, right? Gross. And to think that thing was chasing us while doing that. Though, back onto the subject. The monster of Lautemilch represents various things that the man did behind closed doors. Though there is more about Lautemilch than what we've seen here in the game. It was revealed that the recordings from the childhood flashbacks revealed a hidden message from Lautemilch. It's unclear if he was sending these directly towards Blake or whether he was just mumbling to himself. Lautemilch appears to be thankful that Blake never told a soul about the truth of Jessica's death. Now, if you note in the messages, Lautemilch also thanks God for allowing him to share his bliss with the children. It's unclear as to what Lautemilch is hinting towards, but we can also assume where it's going by these following words. Now, in the notes that Jessica has left behind, those handmade notes, I should say, one of them actually says that the children are suffering, and combined with Valtimilch's words clearly means Jessica was not alone. The question does indeed come down to whether Valtimilch was sexual with any of the children. A lot of people that have been looking into theories clearly deny this for a lot of reasons. However, I personally believe that based upon Lautemilch's actions towards Jessica, being that of affectionate, says enough for me. It's clearly Red Barrels only wants its gamers to interpret this for themselves. So before I end this video, I want to bring up some interesting facts, which keep in mind is not meant to offend anyone, especially those of the Catholic Church or similar religion. Firstly, we don't know the age of Lautemilch. We also do not know how long he was working there and how many children may have been subject to his abuse. There may have been more than just Jessica. Though there are some true facts that is common. Especially in the 90s and dating well and truly back to the 50s and maybe more, including modern day, some priests and nuns did sexually assault children. Now how the church dealt with this was by giving the sinner a holiday. No, I kid you not, there are various documents about this, one of which is called the Devil's Playground, that goes in depth about all of this. What happens is the priest or non whom has confessed their action is blessed by another higher up priest and goes to a separate church. Now this place that a lot of the priests and nuns went to was a place of healing. What they did there for majority of their time was praying and sometimes some of them were given hormone therapy in hopes to tame their nature. Of course, the church would then later remove the priest or nun to another school, and of course, sometimes the acts may have been repeated. So is this what happened to Lautemilch? Was he caught and did the church cover it up for him and send him away? Or was he unable to live with himself and decide to kill himself? Heck, for all we know, he could have easily been found out and a parent might have done it in an act of anger and rage. However, the truth is, in the end, Lautemilch was a sick and twisted man taking advantage of children such as Jessica. He also covered up Jessica's death after he possibly beaten her up and tossed her down the stairs. The rest of his story is unknown and perhaps for the best. 
For now, I wish to thank you all for listening to me. Don't forget to thumbs up this video if you want to see more. And also, I want to know what you guys think in the comments about Lautmilch. Was I close to being right or far from it? Or if you have your own theories about Lautmilch. If you also want to keep up with the series Behind the Mask, Outlast stuff, including all Outlast related news, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more. Coming up next is the baby. But for now, thank you all and I will see you all another day.